Hello, welcome to DIY is my happy place. I'm Amy and today we're going to be talking all about how to make your very own silk flowers. And these particular flowers are made from supplies I picked up from the Dollar Tree. But first, please hit that subscribe button. Now, let's have some fun. I found these pillowcase covers at the Dollar Tree and I made the flowers and today's tutorial is going to be all about how to make these silk flowers and I have to say I just love them. I keep on making more and more of them and I can't believe that I'm getting them for such a good deal. And here is what the flower is going to look like when we finish. But I used these gems and pearls on the original flowers, but they're a little bit hard to come by right now. I don't know why, I'm just not able to find these right now. And so the one thing that I always do is just adjust. Uh, everything changes in the Dollar Tree, and I like to use Dollar Tree items. So rather than using those gems, I'm gonna go ahead and show you how to do it with just your good old faux pearl beads. And these particular beads are large and with no hole in the center. So that works perfect for what we're doing. Okay, here is the pillow cover that I picked up from the Dollar Tree and I'm just so happy with it. I use a lot of grays and charcoals in my house, so it goes with just about any room. And then for the flowers, we're gonna use the table runner that matches exactly with the pillowcase. Now there's a lot of different table runners and now that I'm doing these flowers, I just love to find all different colors. And then I found the pillowcases that are silk and I thought, will the same process work with silk and satin? And the answer is yes. Yes, it does work. I'm so excited. So today's, we're gonna go ahead and do the silk. Now, what you're gonna need are some templates and each one for, for round circles and that's how we make our flowers. But we are not going to use round circle templates. And I will show you why in just a minute. We're gonna use square templates. And if you check the link out below, there are free versions of these templates that you can go to with a link. Now, the reason why I like to use square templates is we're not gonna waste any fabric and it's a lot easier. It's a much faster process. Okay, so this is the first time I'm actually doing these flowers using a patterned fabric. And so, I have no idea what it's gonna look like, but we're gonna find out together. Now, the first thing that you're gonna to wanna to do is fold them over in half so that there's four layers, and then we're gonna lay out our templates. And you wanna just put them any way that you can to, to waste the least amount of fabric, because I always like to reuse every square inch of fabric, and I plan on doing some smaller, little tiny flowers in the future so even these edges on the bottom I will be able to use. So you get your template down and then get a marker. Now you don't want a marker that bleeds too much because a regular sharpie kind of bled quite a bit and it used up a little bit more of the fabric but if you if that's the only kind of marker you have use it don't worry because we're going to be trimming around these edges and we're going to be burning the edges. So you don't have to worry that you're gonna see your marker. Now, I had originally started marking this with a yellow highlighter, and that worked fine with my gray fabric, but it certainly does not work with this pink fabric. I just couldn't see the yellow very good, so I switched over to a different highlighter using the same pillowcase. So the opposite side has yellow marks on it, and I really don't think it's gonna matter on these flowers because once they're all assembled and burnt, you won't see that yellow anyway. So, I don't like to waste anything, so that's what we're gonna do. Now, I used a piece of foam core just as a straight edge. I mean, really anything goes. You just wanna cut your lines all along the way. And the one thing that I did figure out is those little slivers that go in between that you're not gonna need, go ahead and scribble those out because when you are cutting 
after you have your template out of the way and you start cutting the fabric, it starts to get a little bit confusing of where am I, where, which part do I need, and which part's the inside and the outside, and whatever. So trust me, that does help. So you just keep on going along and mark up all your little squares. Now, I love to I love these squares. You just want each one to be a quarter of an inch smaller than the next. So that once these are all cut out, it'll be kind of like one of those Russian stacking dolls that you get that's like big, little, 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 just barely a little bit smaller each time. And I tried making these flowers to see if it would work if they were all the same size. And then just using the melting process later, to make the adjustments, but it really didn't work. You you do need to have them going in a little bit smaller. Now, as we talk about this melting thing, there is a part where we're gonna use some candles and we're gonna melt the edges, kind of like you would with a frayed knot, but I would suggest that there is a parental discretion advice here because you don't want children playing with candles and fire and burning edges of fabric. So I usually always try to make all my videos very user-friendly and I have a four-year-old granddaughter and a two-year-old granddaughter but this is definitely one I would let them watch up to a certain point and I'm going to give you a warning ahead of time so that you know when it's coming <laughs> okay now <clears throat> once we have <clears throat> the nine squares drawn out we want to add a little paper clip or clothespin to hold the fabric together this particular fabric is very slippery so it wants to slide around and so we want to hold it together until we can cut out our little squares now don't panic if this isn't perfect it just doesn't need to be absolutely perfect because we're going to do what we can to make it not perfect anyway we want it to have little bends and curves and whatever so just cut the best you can and get them in order and once you start cutting you're going to lose track of wait which one was the big one which one's the you know it it really doesn't matter but we do have four layers here because the pillowcase was folded over so there's four layers at a time it's a good job good idea to have some good fabric scissors i will have to admit that i lost my fabric scissors because well okay here's the story i put these kinds of projects in a bag in my car and whenever I have time I will just cut out a flower pattern here and there and then I paper clip them together and I have them ready for my next project and it can be any color any type and it's just a nice thing to do I actually was in a line getting a COVID test and I had to sit in the car for an hour and a half and I had brought this project along and I was cutting out flowers and it was just a nice way to pass my time the problem is somewhere along the way I think I mistook it for trash or possibly my husband and it got thrown away with my good scissors. So this is what I'm gonna do. I am gonna make myself a canvas bag, add some of these cute little flowers on the outside of my canvas bag as my craft bag. And so I won't accidentally throw away good pieces of fabric and scissors again. But the bottom line is I used my paper scissors to cut this and it did work to a point. I'm just saying if I had better scissors, this would have been a lot faster and easier. But the point is, it's fun to try. Now, I also was thinking about all the different types of things that I can make with these flowers. Now again, today I'm showing you pillows, but once you get the technique, this particular technique down of how to create flowers with silk and you know satin and different types of fabric, it's gonna make you just want to try all kinds of different things. You could make, uh, bouquets you could you know a floral bouquet that would be pretty you could make a wreath um, I was even thinking of headbands to go or on a, on a cute dress there's just there's so many things you can do with flowers my daughter-in-law put flowers on my granddaughter's wall and they kind of just went down the wall and right up next to her cute little toddler bed there's just so many things you can do them in all different colors Dollar Tree has a lot of different pillow cases and they actually change it out quite a bit but even still if you were to pick up the fabric somewhere else using this technique is a great idea i would love to have your opinion your ideas of what kind of things what kind of projects do you think that silk flowers could be used for and comment below i'd love to hear your ideas and thoughts okay there now i've used half my fabric i'm going to set that aside and we will keep working on 
these and the great thing is you can make a total of between eight and nine based on the pattern size that I have flowers out of one pillowcase and then you have 60 beads that you get from the dollar store so I'm I'm my commitment here is two dollars not bad and the amount of color and fun that it can create is so worth the two dollars okay now you're going to want paper clips because now that we've got all our squares cut out we're going to separate them according to their height and then we'll paper clip them together now if you don't paper clip them together it does get a little bit confusing and you're you can't figure out where you started or where you stopped and they want to stick together so definitely this is worth doing in order to keep everything in order okay so i just line them up according to height and then start separating now i was thinking about oh man these these satin you know it'd be really cool to make corsages or boutonnieres according to wedding parties or prom dresses or i mean there is just so many fun things okay now when we're making these flowers what you're gonna want is uh, again some sharp scissors you're gonna see these paper scissors just do not cut it so i actually grabbed out my little craft scissors that i got from the dollar store and they work i mean they actually work I will say they go dull pretty fast so they don't continue to work for project after project, but they work for this. Okay, so what you're gonna do is you're gonna fold your square in half and then fold it in half again, holding onto the corner, and then you're just gonna cut the outside edge. That is how we're gonna get our circle without having to cut little circles. So much faster. And the other thing is you, want them to be a little bit beveled on the outside edge or if they aren't that's okay but if they are that's fine too because it just helps to give a little personality to our little flower petals so you just keep going along cutting those outside semicircle and look how fast that is that is so much faster than drawing a circle on a piece of fabric and trying to cut those circles out circles are hard to hold on to when you're cutting and so this really is a fast way. Again, whenever I'm doing YouTube projects, any kind of DIY thing that I'm gonna put on YouTube, I always do it ahead of time so that I can really find the tips and tricks, the things that work, the things that don't. I'm not gonna waste your time on things that don't work. And so once I troubleshoot and figure out, oh, yep, this is faster, this is faster, that's when I start to show you what we can do. Okay, see how fast this is coming along? and. As I was making the, this particular flower, I was thinking, hmm, I wonder how this is going to look when it starts to get melted and with these different colors in it. I, I, I just, it's hard to visualize actually until there's a finished project, but it's worth trying. That's the one thing for sure. You can't knock it till you try it. Okay, so there we go. We're just moving right along. Now, I, as I am cutting here, I'm going to talk a little bit about how much fun it is to create all different things floral. I, I guess flowers are a thing that really make me have a happy day. And I have a friend who, she got a sign, I think it was from Hobby Lobby, I'm not sure, but it has this little sign and it says, Hello Beautiful, and then it has a flower on it. So it's just like a triangular sign, Hello Beautiful, with, with, with a flower. I love it so much. And she said she bought it because, you know, through this whole time, sometimes you just start feeling depressed or down on yourself. And she just felt like if I had a sign that said, hello, beautiful, it'll remind me to look on the positive and not, you know, not look bad. And th with the little flower, it just helps so much. And I think, you know, that's what I'm going to do. I am going to make signs that say hello beautiful for everybody I can think of and I'm going to put those with a little flower with their favorite color. The other thing that I was thinking that would be fantastic with these silk flowers is to make a corsage for your mother and put make it in her favorite colors and her favorite things and then wrap it up really pretty, put it in a box, mail it now and then just put on the outside do not open till mother's day so she has to just hold it for all this time and not know what's inside there and then on mother's day she can open it up and have a beautiful corsage to wear on mother's day that you made personally for her with her favorite colors and 
it's just good for generations to come. I just think that's the cutest idea. Okay, so now we're getting all of these put together. And one thing that I sometimes say, it's just they stick together a little bit because of the satiny silk, you know, fabric. Um, so, it, they, you know, you just have to keep on pinching them apart. Now, if you end up getting yours all together and you realize, hey, wait a minute, I missed one. I don't have nine in each stack. That's okay, too. Don't worry about it. If one flower ends up with 11 petals and one ends up with nine, you know, eight petals, it's okay. I, that's the one thing. These flowers are flexible. That's for sure. And if they're not exactly perfectly sized, they seem to be exactly the same size instead of, you know, getting smaller and smaller and smaller. That's okay, too. We can adjust a little bit here. Okay, I want to tell you one other thing that I tried with this particular type of flower, just to let you know what another miss that you don't want to do. I was wondering if I could melt them all the petals at the same time and get them to crinkle up differently. And the answer is no, it doesn't work. They just melt together. They all try to go the same direction. It really doesn't work. So you do need to have them separated and each petal gets its own little identity. And so, okay, this is when we're getting close to where we need to have a warning so that if you have small children watching, you can skip over just a little segment, segment of this video. And so they don't get any bad ideas. I will say that it is pretty harmless, but not when you're talking about small children. Okay, so I just take a candle, put a box or something under it in case there's a little wax that drips off and we're going to light the edges and you just think about this kind of like a we're going to have a birthday cake. i mean it's as dangerous as having birthday candles on your birthday cake i think maybe just a smidgen more but not much it's 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 okay as long as you're you know what you're doing <laughs> okay so we're going to take our piece of fabric and you're just going to go along and burn the very edges now when i was watching this it was actually a youtube video that i saw and they were doing it with ribbon so a little bit different but still burning the edges and i was thinking wait don't they need to hold hold this with pliers isn't that doesn't that get hot doesn't it burn your fingers the answer is no 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 like as soon as you pull it away it is immediately cool. It's just crazy because you're just barely, barely, barely touching the flame. Just, just leaning it up against the flame enough to melt the outer edges. That's all there is. And then you go along with each of your nine petals and do the same thing. You just very carefully bring it right up to the flame and melt those edges. And it is so satisfying to watch them just kind of crinkle up right there. That's all there is to it. And then all of a sudden they look like really cute little flower petals. It's just fabulous. So exciting. Okay, so then you just keep going one petal at a time. Now, as you start to get towards the outer edges of the petals where they're a little bit bigger around, then you can take uh, the fabric and just give it a little bit right on top of it so that it'll crinkle up more. So not just on the edge, you might put some right in towards the center and you barely barely need to touch it and it'll just start to melt in now if you leave it over the flame too long and it burns a hole in it don't worry it's not a big deal it will work still because it's going to be all crinkled with the other petals and it still just looks fabulous and I will say I've done that on a few of them so that isn't anything to worry about that's for sure so you just keep going along going along and giving it its own little identity you can turn it this way and that way in order to have it have its own little crinkling and now we're getting close see how fast and easy this is and I will say that I I want to do all colors now 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 I'm thinking oh this would be so cool if it was you know they have white table runners at the Dollar Tree they have black ones but I was thinking an all white bouquet to make a wreath would be really pretty and maybe add some little silver beads or something to it yeah that would be really pretty but again can you imagine if you had a bright pink prom dress and then you had these pink flowers to go with it I just love it and I will be doing a tutorial in the future about how to make corsages and boutonnieres and actually I was thinking it would be really neat to have 
corsage made with some silk flowers and some fresh flowers actually where that you could make in advance and then just have a couple of spots to add some fresh flowers later and it would be ready to go okay we're getting close it's just so much fun see how those little edges get frayed every once in a while it seems like one will just a little bit want to catch on fire you just blow it out again like you would your birthday candles and that's all there is to it i i tend to do this um when i'm just watching a tv program listening to music listening to a podcast whatever it may be watching youtube videos which i do a lot because i'm always trying to get new ideas and so i just love being able to have this new little diy project that i can do okay we're getting close to the end now does anybody have any questions or comments that they have go ahead and share share those down below and i will do my best to get on and answer anything you may have okay now that we have all the petals put together we're just going to line them up make sure that we have them going you know largest to smallest that they're in the order of the way they were cut okay now you're going to want to get a pen or a marker a pen or a pencil is a little bit too small at least for the size of bead that i'm going to be using so a marker is just a little bit bigger around and you just take your smallest petal and fold it around the outside of the marker and then add a little tiny dab of glue on it and then attach that to the very center of the second petal and that's how we're going to form our flower now once you've got that on there you just fold the second petal around and we're going to continue this on and you just kind of twist it and turn it so that you can have a good grip on it and make sure it stays centered now with this satin it does try to slip up and you kind of move around a little bit so that's why you just want to keep holding on to those edges one more little dot of glue it doesn't have to be hot glue if you were to make these flowers in advance and have the burned edges already and you wanted to do this with small children you could use just your e6000 or some other type of glue but um i do use hot glue with my granddaughters um they're very good to not touch it they know that's hot they don't touch it and you know they they do okay so that's totally whatever you would like Okay, so again, another little dot of glue. I will say about that burning, I, I remember when I was little, we, we always had fireplaces and we were building fires and everything from a very young age. We understood about matches, but then uh, there was a cartoon, Saturday morning cartoon, and after the cartoon, there was a commercial and it said something about, do not play with matches. And I remember as a young, young child thinking, you can play with matches? And that made me start, oh dear, got myself in, I, I didn't get myself in trouble, but you know, it just started to seem like, oh, this isn't just something you'd build fires. Okay. Anyway, so that's why I put the parental warning on this, just to make sure we don't put bad ideas into little, little ones' minds until they're old enough to know the difference. Okay. Now that is still hot. Even though there's hot glue, the hot glue has been going, it takes a while to cool down. So I like to get my trusty old foam core that I've been using for my straight edge and I just put my flower right on the foam core until it's completely dry and once it's cooled off and dried you can fold out the rest of the flower and now I get my beads and I you can use the ones that have holes in the middle um, but you just turn it so you don't see the hole but in this case I'm just it's a holeless bead so that works perfect so you just put a little dot of hot glue in the center of the flower toss in your bead and voila that's all there is to it isn't that awesome and i do like the two-tone color that works just fine i yeah that's all right so the sky's the limit any color of fabric that you can pick your pick up will work now I want to show you how I did these pillows. I mean, they, they just really couldn't be any easier. I always recycle pillows. These three pillows that you're seeing in the background, I actually got from a sofa years ago that I don't even have anymore, but I just keep the pillows. You do need to iron because the folds that it comes in, they just don't fall out. So you do want to iron your pillowcase before you put your flowers on it. And then here's another 
old recycled pillow. I made this one years ago and I don't use that color style anymore. So I'm just gonna put that in. I, I have some pillows that I've picked up at a second hand store that I got for a still. In fact, they still had the tags on them. They were brand new pillows, but they were just really an ugly color. And so I just get those pillows and add a new case to them and away I go. I just absolutely love to change the look and decor of my house periodically even seasonally and this is the perfect way to be able to do that and oh this is even the best you know now that dollar tree has these you can't even buy a zipper for the price <laughs> i don't think that you can get these pillowcases and they're pretty much a one size fits most pillow you know it's a very average size okay now we're gonna put the pillows on. There's a couple of ways you can do this. I am using these pillows. They, they're very decorative pillows, so they're not gonna get a lot of use. So I'm gonna go ahead and hot glue them on. If you know that you're gonna be using the pillows with, you know, where they're gonna be laid on and get some wear and tear or whatever, you might wanna hand stitch this part on just so that it's not popping off. But in this case, this is just fine. I took a floral decorating class once and they taught us in the class that everything in nature comes in odd numbers. So whenever you're doing anything, you wanna have odd numbers. That's why nine petals and then for this, three flowers. You can put them any way you want. I'm gonna do three right in the center, but as you can see in the background, I've done some going down in lines or you could put some on the corners really anything goes that's the beauty of do-it-yourself projects thanks for so much for coming a lot bye thank you so much for sticking with me it was so much fun today making these wonderful flowers and i am looking forward to a lot more projects because now that i've learned how to make these and i've taught you how to make them come along and i'll show you some other things that we can do with these flowers it's going to be a ride. Like and share this out where you can. And I will see you again soon.